and welcome back to my channel, Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney, and I'm here with Gidget, who is... Hi! <laughs> and welcome back to another Sew Along Sunday. That's what I'm going to just start calling these videos, even though not all of them will be Sew Alongs. But today we're delving into week two of the Vogue 1643 Sew Along. Um, okay, I'm still waiting on Petersham Ribbon to arrive from the UK, so today we're going a little bit of out of order, which is fine. It's kind of, um, I like to mix things up sometimes because, um, I don't know, it just keeps things fresh and exciting. But today we'll be constructing most of the outside shell of the jacket, we'll be constructing the inside lining, and we'll be constructing the sleeves of both the lining and the jacket. We will not be inserting the sleeves into either yet. Um, because the side seams on your jacket will not yet be done up at the end of today. We've got to apply the ribbon trim first, which I'm still waiting on. <laughs> so fingers crossed, next week we will have, um, we'll talk about the pockets, making the pockets and getting those put on, putting the ribbon trim on, and then setting in our sleeves. And then for the, uh, that'll be week three, and then week four, we will be talking about, um, or I'll be showing you how to put the lining into the jacket and finishing everything off. So um, that's kind of the plan going forward. So as always, leave me any questions you might have in the comments below. Um, I'm still learning, filming the sew alongs is a lot different than just doing my regular video filming. And so it's still a definite learning curve, making sure you guys can see things, um, making sure you can hear things, making sure um, mostly that you can see all the different details that I'm trying to tell you about. Um, so yeah, any constructive criticism is very much welcome in that arena um, because it is a steep learning curve and I'm still learning. So <laughs> um, yeah, so leave any questions below and I will see you guys on Tuesday, but then again next Sunday for week three of the Sew Along. Hope you guys have a great rest of your Sunday and I'll see you on Tuesday. Bye. All right, let's get started sewing, guys. All right, our first, <laughs> our first um, instruction here, because we've already interfaced all of our pieces, is to stitch the dart in the front and press that open because it's um, a weird dart. We'll look at that in a second. And then it's got us constructing our pockets. However, I'm still waiting on my Petersham ribbon, and I'm actually going to hand sew my pockets onto the jacket. That's the way um, the Chanel jackets are done. And I just think, you know, this is Gucci inspired, and I just think it's going to look nice. And they're not going to be functioning pockets. They're just there for look, um, and I plan on doing that anyway. But I will talk about if you do want to edge stitch. Um, you could definitely do that at this step. But again, we're going to skip and come back to those later. So after we've done our front dart, we're going to sew our back dart, sew our back together, um, yeah, and do some stay stitching and then sew our um, shoulder seams together. So yeah, so basically we're going from step two all the way through step 17. Um, yes, but, sorry, but um, I am going to skip the pockets, which is, um, I think for, I'm doing view B, so it's just step six through 10 or through 11, I guess. Nope, through 13. Sorry. <laughs> We're going to go skip those and come back to those um, at a later point as soon as my Petersham ribbon comes in. All right, so let's stitch some darts. Okay, so we're going to start with the front. I'm also going to try and make sure that I'm staying in frame here. But you should have gone ahead and marked all of your um, markings that are on the front of your pattern. Now, because we've got this weird open dart here, I've only marked the top of it. I've marked my dart point, and I'm out of frame. I've only marked my dart point here, and um, and then I marked some lines just down, because then it's just a 5 eighths, 5 eighths of an inch seam once you get down to the opening. So I'm going to sew those darts together. And one thing I like to do, get my pins out here, is when I'm doing tailoring like this, I am going to actually pin through my tip. I'm going to be on this side, but I'm going to go through and make sure that my pin is going in one dart leg and out the other. So you can kind of see that there. So I'm going through my chalk line, through my chalk line, through my chalk line, so that it's holding that line perfect. Now, I 
backstitch at my tip, tip of my darts. And I know that's a big no-no, but this is nice thick fabric. And again, I mentioned it before, I like to break the rules sometimes. And actually, as we're sewing this jacket, I'm probably gonna pop out of order um, from the directions a little bit. I hope that doesn't bother any of you. Um, but I do have ways I like to do things, and I'm gonna be changing up some of the instructions um, as I go along, because I don't like the way they they finish off some of the insides. All right, so I'm just going to sew from the bottom here. This is the bottom of the front at 5 eighths of an inch. And then when I get up to this point, I'll kind of run into my chalk line that's there. So I'm gonna sew that really quick. So there we have it. That dart has been sewn and now we're going to press it open. But I'm going to do the other one real quick and then we'll take you over to my pressing board and we will sew, press that open. Okay, this is a um, Taylor's Point, um, making sure I'm staying in frame here, a Taylor's uh, Point presser, um, clapper on the bottom, it's all sorts of things. So what I'm going to do is lay this on top so that you can, I actually like to start. It also helps that this is wood because that will suck all that steam right out and help set your crease. So I'm going to press this dart open. You can use your hands to kind of uh, trap that steam in there and help set that crease. That's why I love working with wool. Now, when we get up here to the point, again, you only have this cut open so far. So I'm going to put this, normally I would use a um, ham to press my darts, but because we're pressing this kind of open, you're gonna kind of smush the dart in half a little bit, um, kind of staying in line with the fact that it's being pressed open. So it's different than how you would normally press a dart. Normally you would press all the bulk to one side, but this one you just kind of want to smush it down. And there it is from the front. A nice, beautiful dart. Okay, so I'm going to do that to the same thing to the other side. Also, remember that when you are sewing with wool or wool blends, pressing is almost as important as the actual sewing of the garment. Um, so, you want to get nice good press, make sure everything gets set. Wool is a natural fiber, which means it's like your hair. If you try and curl your hair when it's wet, it will not stay. So try not to move your fabric until it is um, somewhat dry. All right. All right, again, this next steps have us um, moving on to our pockets. We are going to skip that for now. We'll come back to it. So now we're gonna sew our back dart and then sew our back together and then stay stitch our back neck and then we will attach the front and the back at the shoulders. All right. So again, I have gone ahead, and hopefully you can see this, and I have um, drawn in my dart legs with this really long fisheye dart with uh, my chalk pen, and I'm gonna sew it like a fisheye dart. Even though it doesn't have an end at the bottom, it's, it, it's gonna be sewn all the way down to the bottom. I'm gonna start here at the midpoint of this dart. Bring that down a little bit. Um, I'm hoping you can see that. And then sew up to the point, and then I'll start here at the midway and sew all the way down. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pin along those dart legs just to make sure my dart legs line up. And then I will sew both sides. Now 
Now, because you want the bulk of the dart on the right hand side under your machine, I'm going to sew it from this side going, let me think this through, going from the midpoint down, and I'll sew it from this side going from the midpoint up. So I'm going to have, I'm going to mark first one way and then I'll go back and mark the other way. And I like to mark my points first, and I usually will just do one pin in the body, I mean a, a dart this short, or this part of it. I'll probably put a couple more um, the bottom. So there we go. I have my lines all match up on the front and the back. So I'm going to start at the midpoint and sew up, and then I will flip it over and do um, from the other side, go from the midpoint down to the bottom. So that looks good from both sides. Now I'm going to start at on from this side, <laughs> the opposite side, and I'm going to pin all the way down to the bottom of the jacket. Same thing with following my uh, making sure my chalk lines match up on both sides. And I'm actually just going to pin it right where um, I had a set of dots that were right here, and I just made sure it matched because I'm already sewn here. So now I'm going to sew from the midpoint um, of that dart there all the way down to the base of the jacket. Okay, and there we go. We have one really long fish eye dart. And this gets pressed to the center of the jacket. So let me sew the other one. Um, and again, we've got the hem that is interfaced and then this back stay that's interfaced, but our dart should end right before that interface piece on the top of the back. So um, I'm gonna set this aside and do the other side. Uh, sew that dart and then we'll meet back at the um, pressing table. All right, now this is more your typical dart. Um, we're gonna press the dart bulk to the center back. So I've got it over a ham. Um, so I'm gonna press from the back and from the front. Back first. Again, using my hands, it's really hot, <laughs> to help form that wool. I love working with wool. All right, and as you can see, we got a little bit of shadowing there where it just kind of folded over on itself. So now I'll go from the front and press it um, just to get it all nice and neat. All right, and there we've got a nice long dart all throughout the back of the jacket. So now I will do the same thing on the other side, and then we'll go back to the sewing table. All right, our next step is that we're going to sew the center back seam on our back piece, 5 eighths of an inch, all the way from the top to the bottom. So I'm going to do that real quick, and then we're going to press it open. Okay, now we have the back completely constructed here. Um, we've got the dart sewn and the center back, and now I'm gonna stay stitch the neckline just from the um, shoulder seam to the center back, and then from the other shoulder seam to the center back, and I'm gonna show, sew it just shy of 5 eighths of an inch, which is the um, technical seam allowance. So I'm gonna do that really quick. All right, now this is an important step because you do not want this neckline to stretch out as you are sewing because you have a back band that's gonna have to get sewn to that and that will be a real issue later on. You'll be kicking yourself. Um, and actually, I've got some bubbling of my, I was not good. I moved my um, 
jacket pieces before the fusing was actually fused on there. So I'm going to hit that with an iron real quick, which is very easy to do when you've used fusible. And then we're going to attach our front and back together at the shoulder seams. Okay, now we're on step 17, and we are going to attach the front to the back at the shoulder seams. So I'm just going to sew 5 eighths of an inch across both shoulder seams, right sides together, um, and then press those seams open. Alright, so as best as you can see, I now have a somewhat constructed, somewhat constructed, we don't have the side seams done yet, but um, starting to look a little bit more like a jacket. So now I'm going to set this aside for a bit because we are going to go ahead and attach, I'm going to go rogue off the instructions a little, um, and we're going to do one of the bands. So we're going to set that aside, not on the instructions. Ooh. Sorry, hold on sending pieces flying. All right, the instructions on step 18, um, right here, want you to stay stitch the inside curve. So your band piece kind of curves outward um, on the outside here. Am I holding that all right? <laughs> kind of curves outward. And it wants you to stay stitch here. That's so you can clip and make it fit into the front of the jacket. I do not like doing it that way. I think it makes your um, seam line very unstable. So um, I am not going to do that step. So I'm going to, to um, skip that. But then it wants you to stitch your uninterfaced back neck band to the uninterfaced front neck band. Well, remember, we interfaced both sets of neck bands and back neck band. However, I don't like, I want my heavier interface side facing the public. I don't want it on the inside of my jacket. That's just... I want, yes. So I'm actually going to use my pieces that have the weft interfacing to do this step. So I'm going to attach um, and make sure you're, you're going to match up your notches here at the shoulder seam because this can get confusing. But basically the shorter curve of your back neckline is going to be in one fell swoop with the, um, the side of the front band that kind of scoops out. So just make sure your notches match up here at the front so that you don't get them turned around backwards. But I'm going to be using the the three pieces that were interfaced with the weft. And then we'll use the other three pieces later um, when we sew that to the lining, but that's in a later step. So don't worry about those now, just set those aside for now. So again, I have two that are interfaced with the weft. If you can kind of see that, I don't know if you can see that or not. And then two that are interfaced with the lighter weight interfacing. The two that are interfaced with the lighter weight interfacing are going to get set aside. And the same for my back neck, neck piece. I'm going to set the one with the lighter interfacing to the side. All right, so now I'm going to sew these together, right sides together. Again, you want the shorter curve, this curve here, to match up with this outside line that curves out. Does that make sense? So you're gonna, and if you're following your notches, they should match up correctly. I have fused over. So basically, let me set that aside. Basically, when you think about it, when it's all sewn and opened up um, like this, like this, you want this shorter curve to be, I'm telling you right, that's correct. <laughs> See, this gets very confusing. So right sides together, when it opens up, you want the shorter curve to be in the same like line, the same line here as this inner curve, because this is all gonna be, um, like this is gonna hug your neck and this is gonna be the front part of the jacket, okay? Because the notches are almost, not quite, but almost in the center, which is bad, bad. Bad on the drafting. Okay, so I'm going to sew this to both pieces, and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done so you can orientate yourself correctly, but I'm going to sew these together at the shoulder seams. So 
So, when you're looking at these sewn, right sides together, I'm trying to move my arm, you can see that, um, so this is all right sides together, and uh, so you're looking at the back side, the wrong side of the back neck facing, but then you've got your, the way that it kind of curves inward is on the inside. So when this gets pressed open, it will look like that. So this is the edge that curves, that curves out, I guess. Because it kind of curves, yeah. Sorry, I need to trim my interfacing on this side. It got rogue on me. But this, yeah, the where it kind of curves inward like this, um, in, <laughs> is on the inside. Okay, I'm going to go press open my seam allowances here at the shoulder. Okay, so here is the front of my jacket. So I've got... Ugh. Basically, this is the hole where the front band's going to go. So I've kind of got the back of the jacket, because we haven't sewn our side seams yet. The back of the jacket falling off the table. And here's the front of our jacket. So here's, you know, where it kind of curves in or out, and however you want to say it, curves here. And then here's the inside. So we're going to sew our band right sides together. And just so it gets kind of confusing because you are sewing what appears to be, you know, you feel like, oh, well, it's the neck edge. I should be sewing that. That is not, you're going to sew your longer piece to the back. There's going to be a lot of easing in that's going to happen here. And I am going to pin, I've marked the um, center of my back facing because it gets cut on the fold. It's a really easy mark to make. And I'm going to line that up to my center back seam. And I am going to put a pin there. This is a lot of like um, fabric to manipulate. And I don't, do I have? Hold on. Yeah, that's the only mark I've got on these pieces. Okay, so then, and it's going to look like, you know, there's no way this is going to work, but I promise it will. We're going to line up our shoulder seams. Like so. And again, look at all that excess fabric. Can you see where that's just popping way up here? I promise this is all going to ease in. <laughs> it's just because it's a curve. And then we're going to match up our shoulder seam on the other side. And then we should have a notch here on the front that's going to match up with the notch on our neckband. And I believe the instructions, they, yes, which is fine. We're going to sew, because this is not a facing, this is a band. This gets sewn all the way to the end. Now, when we attach the other band to this, um, we're going to stop at the bottom. But for this piece, sewing onto this, we're going to go all the way to the bottom. And we're going to sew at 5 eighths of an inch, so I'm matching the notches on the other side. I'm on the other side. And then I'm just going to pin it here at the bottom. And we're going to start on one end and sew all the way around. Now, before we do that, the typical rule of thumb is that anything that's cut on the bias Anything that is not interfaced um, or anything that's slinkier, like a lighter weight, like if you're sewing um, fashion fabric to a lining, should go against the feed dogs, so on the bottom. However, both of these pieces are interfaced around where we'll be sewing because we interfaced even around the jacket edge. So then the rule is you want your curvy parts, which are definitely the um, this back neck facing, although that can change depending on how curvy the front I just un, totally un-threaded um, my machine. 
but I think that's the case in all this. So we are going to sew with the band against the feed dogs, okay? Because that's going to help us ease. And I just unthreaded my machine, so give me a second to rethread it. All right, so again, I've got the band against the feed dogs. It's on the bottom, and my jacket is on the top. We're gonna sew it five eighths of an inch. And I have a special way that I hold my fabric so that the bottom doesn't feed in faster than the top because that's the um, that can be a problem when sewing with um, out pins. Okay, now ideally I would have the top of the jacket on the bottom because it, the top of the jacket is the curvy part in this spot, but it's a very short area so I'm going to leave it. But basically what I'm doing is I'm pulling it taut and turning up um, the fabric with my hand like this and I'm just going to take my fingernails and pull this back and we're going to go slow and I'm going to honor the curve that's there, but I just want to make sure that my raw edges are lined up. Again, ideally this part of the jacket would be on the feed dogs, but it's easier to sew all the way around, so we're gonna go this way. Although you could just sew the back from shoulder seam to shoulder seam and then switch it over and sew with the other end on the feed dogs if you wanted. Okay, now the curve twist. The curve is going to switch. So I'm going to put my hand under here and kind of pull back the band so that we've got matching raw edges. And your feed dogs are doing all the easing for you. But now this is where it's going to get tricky. This is also why we stay stitched our back neckline because it's going to get, again, it's going to get tricky. Go slow till I hit my shoulder seam. Okay. So now you're going to see if I flatten this out, how much my um, neck facing is going to shoot out above because you're sewing a concave curve to a convex curve. So I'm just going to put my fingers in between these two layers and I'm going to use my fingernails to pull that back. And I'm going to go slow so that I can try not to pinch anything. And I'm also honoring the curve of the neckline. You know, get to the center back because it flattens out. Take a break. <laughs> Remove your pin. And you can kind of lay that out again and see. Look at all that difference. That's okay. They fit, I promise. So then you're just going to kind of pull that back, go slow. Again, if we pinch some stuff, it's not the end of the world. It's what unpickers are for. Don't worry about anything that is yet to come. Just worry about the next couple of inches in front of your feed dogs or in front of your needle. All right. Now we're going to worry about this part. <laughs> so you can raise and lower your presser foot as need be. Um, and again, I'm just making sure that my raw edges are lined up. And I'm going to sew to this pen. And then, again, ideally this would be on the bottom, but got a lot of curve happening here. So I'm just going to pull that back with my fingernails, kind of easing it in a little bit with my fingers. So I 
with wool is very, um, very much like sculpting, I feel like, a lot of times. Or really just tailoring in general. Wool is my favorite thing to use for tailoring, though. And then we're on the straightaway. Again, I'm holding my ends together. I don't want that bottom to feed in. These straightaway pieces are faster than the top. And there we go. Now we can check our work. And we can see, see look how roughly it is up there along the neckline, but we've got everything eased in just as it should be. It looks great. All right. So now the next step is the next step is going to be any part where there's a curve, which obviously definitely around the neckline and really through this area. Um, you don't really need to clip anything on the straight area, but as it starts to do its curvy curve, anywhere where the, any of the fabric on either side is starting to ruffle right there, we're going to cut about, I don't know, depending on how severe the curve, half to three quarters of an inch. Machine has held that captive. And I'm gonna go all the way around. And when I get to the back neck, I'm gonna cut it more like every half inch because there is a lot of ruffling going on there, which is perfectly normal. I'm also gonna trim here, um, kind of trim some of the bulk of those uh, seam allowances out because I can and it will help later when turning. So I just kind of cut those at an angle. All right, we're to the back neck, so now we're gonna go a little more frequently. And you're just gonna see all that excess relax. Be careful that everything is lying somewhat flat underneath your scissors. You don't wanna accidentally cut into your coat if it happens to be just kind of pulled up underneath or cut into the facing or any of that. Okay, and I would also like to add, if after you have finished um, sewing your band to your jacket front and you find that you've pinched some fabric, which happens, it happens to me, um, pinch some fabric and you have, or you know, fabric's gotten pulled up where it shouldn't, um, and everything is not lying smooth, you do not have to unpick everything. You can unpick just a couple of inches before and after the tuck. Um, if it's a really big tuck, maybe just a little bit more. And you can just re-sew that one little section. You don't have to unpick everything. I mean, I guess if it's super bad, but <laughs> for the most part, you can get away with just unpicking a small section. All right. Now, typically at this point, you could grade your seam allowance, which means you cut one seam allowance um, shorter than the other, um, and you would probably do the jacket seam allowance longer and your um, band seam allowance shorter, because probably you'd want to fold it to the jacket, um, although maybe not necessarily. Well, whichever way you're pressing it. The longer side needs to go against the side you're pressing and then you would cut the other seam allowance shorter. However, because all this is going to be in case and I think it looks nicer, I'm actually going to press this whole seam open. And since we are going to be putting Petersham ribbon on this seam here in a little bit, I'm going to press this whole seam open. So I'm just going to go around with my tailor's ham and I'm going to press this, this seam for, with the band to the front of the jacket. I'm going to press it open all the way around. So let's go do that next. All right, time to press everything open. <laughs> I've got a very small area that I'm trying to work in, so I hope you guys can see everything okay. All right, so I'm just gonna use a seam roll, um, and I am literally just gonna press this seam open. 
I find this is the flattest seam. It's my favorite seam, and when I can use it, I definitely do. And again, all this is going to be encased in lining, so it is fine, and I think less bulky to press them open. I would also like to note at this part, you'll notice, so this will technically make up the whole front of the jacket. And had we used uninterfaced or even the lighter interfaced, this band is not going to match your jacket front. And that you can tell on the outside. So definitely make sure that for this band that you're using the same, you know, the weft interfacing as you've done for the front of the jacket. Um, and then we will use the other one for the, um, oh, the inside, the facing basically. Okay, when I get to these curvy bits, I'm going to use my tailor's ham. Take your time. There's no race on this. Try not to steam your fingers. That hurts. <laughs> Just going to pull things against that ham as you go along. You've got these little mohawks sticking up. Again, wool just molds so beautifully. And if you cut out some of that seam allowance there um, where they're connected at the shoulders, this gets really nice and flat. And you'll see how um, when you start to press here in this back neck, how it splays open on one side and then it gets kind of bunchy on the other side. And that's exactly why we clip releases that fabric so that it can sit the way it's supposed to sit. You could also use a clapper instead of using your hand if you find you're burning the living daylights out of your hand, <laughs> which it does get hot. All right, now look how lovely look how lovely that seam looks. That curve and the same here down the front because that's all going to be on the outside. You could definitely also hit this from the right side if you wanted to. Just make sure everything's staying open. Yeah, there we go. Okay, the next step with the front of this jacket is to attach the trim. All right, just like we did for the front of the jacket, um, for the lining, I'm going to do the same basic steps. I'm going to sew my front dart same way I sewed the dart in the front of the jacket. I'm going to sew my back dart same way. Um, I'm going to sew my center back seam for the jacket, same way. Um, stay stitch my neckline of my jacket. Um, too high. <laughs> stay stitch my neckline the same way. Sh sew them together at the shoulders. And then I'm going to not stay stitch, just like I did the band on the front of the jacket. Um, but I am going to um, sew my bands together. And then I will come back and we will attach the bands to the lining here in just a minute. Okay, be right back. Okay, so I've got the lining. Let's go through here. And again, it's just like the outside of the jacket. I have the back is sewn, um, the middle, the center back is sewn, both darts in the back are sewn. 
Um, the front, the darts are sewn, same way as the uh, jacket. I've stay stitched the back neckline, and then I've sewn them together at the shoulder seams. Um, they are still not sewn at the side seams because it's so much easier to put the band in when they are not um, connected. So I'm just going to lay this out. That back piece is going to go over my table just so the whole neck edge is kind of splayed flat. But first we need to sew our other band together. Now, you'll remember that our other one, um, we had two sets of front bands, or neck bands, period, the back and the front. One set had the weft fusible and the other side had the lighter weight fusible. So now we are using the three pieces that have the lighter weight fusible on the back, which are the two neck bands and a um, back neck band. All right, so the pieces again, we want to orientate them this way to where it kind of, see how it kind of curves in here is going to face towards the inside. Get that to stay on both pieces. So they're going to face each other. There's where it kind of curves in. And then it's getting all slippery. And then we're going to take our back neck facing right sides together and we're going to have it this way. The shorter curve is going to be at top and we're going to attach the shoulder seams. Right sides together. So it will look like that when all is said and done. So I'm going to do that really quick and then show you what it'll look like once it's sewn. All right. So there it is sewn. If you can kind of see that. And then when I pressed it open, it's going to look like this. So we've got where it kind of bends in is all one line with the inner neck edge. Okay. I have not stay stitched on this side like the instructions um, told me to, because again, I like to ease that in with my hands. So um, I'm just going to go press open these shoulder seams and then we're going to attach this band to the lining. Okay, so wrong side, this is what we got. It kind of bends in on the same, on the inside neck edge. All right, so now we're going to attach right sides together our, this neck band to our um, lining. And again, this long edge is going to be what gets attached to the neck edge of the lining. So it seems counterintuitive, but again, I'm going to pin, I've marked the center of this, which is not a, there it is, which is not a normal, um, it's not on the pattern. I just liked anything that gets cut on the fold. I like to mark the center. I find that comes in very handy. So I will pin that. And then I'm going to pin the shoulder seams. All right, and now I'm going to stop because I'm going to do these in uh, three passes, actually. So typically, when I'm sewing without pins, I mean, I do have pins in here, but when I'm sewing without pins, I want, usually the lining fabric would be on the bottom um, because it gets eased in better. But because this is the bigger curve here, I actually want this against the feed dogs, but only through this section. Through the front sections, I want the lining on the feed dogs. So I'm just going to sew from one shoulder seam to the other shoulder seam and I'm just going to again go in between the layers and pull this top section back so that my raw edges meet. I'm going to go nice and slow so I don't get any pinches. All right, then it's going to be super fluted up there at the top and then feel real tight here at the bottom. Um, or on the lining side, and we will go back and clip that here in a second. And actually, if you wanted to, you could go ahead and clip the, that seam just to kind of give you a, you're not pulling on anything. And again, this tight seam, I like to go about every half inch. Make sure you're not accidentally cutting anything that's folded up on itself. Ask me how I know that one.
And I am going to go ahead and just cut, because I haven't sewn the other side. I don't want to cut this one yet, but I am going to cut that seam allowance on that side. And cut that one at an angle on that side. I'm not going to worry about my lining, because it's just not bulky enough. All right. So now I want to sew with my lining against the feed dog. So now I'll start at the shoulder seam. And there is a notch here that should match up, so I'll pin that. But now we're going to, we're not going to sew this all the way to the base because um, you're going to, well, number one, your band piece is going to be quite a bit, it's going to be longer than your lining piece, which is fine. Um, that's the way it's supposed to be. But we're going to stop. You should have two, um, you should have a small dot marking down here at the, at the bottom of your facing. You're going to stop there, which is about, I don't know. Um all that figured. I mean it's about three inches from the bottom of the lining probably because again your lining got cut shorter than the band pieces in the outside. So now I'm going to start at the shoulder seam on one side I'm going to sew down in any part where I've got my lining that is just wants to shoot out. I'm just going to take my fingers and pull it back so that it eases in. The only pin I've got is right there at that um, notch. Yeah, probably about an inch and a half, which is probably the hem allowance actually, um, of excess. And then you're probably a little over two inches from the bottom of the lining-ish. So now on that side, you can do just a little bit of clipping. <clears throat> they can be a little further spaced because it's not as drastic of a curve. You just need to go a little bit because that's straight from there on down. Just where the fabric, the lining really stops waving. Don't cut through your stitching. Okay. Now on the other side, because I want to keep my lining on the feed dogs, I'm actually going to start at the dots and work my way up. So now we want to make sure that both sides line up. So I want to make sure that I'm that my lining is at the same place. So I'm going to line my bands up, wrong sides together here. I just want to make sure that I'm sewing my um, wrong sides together, not right sides with. <laughs> I want to make sure that I am sewing my band together. Um, since I'm starting at the bottom, I want to make sure that the lining is stopping at the same place on the band on both sides, if that makes sense. And again, I don't use a lot of pens, but you most definitely can use however many you need. All right. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. I'm just going to line those up. So then... on this side. Right sides together. Okay. I want that to be the same. So I'm just going to pop a pin right there. Because there's not really a mark where your lining should hit your facing. So I just lined that up so that they're the same. All right. So now, but however, I'm not going to start sewing there. Because remember, we're going to start sewing at the dot. You probably can't see that. I can barely see it. But the dot that's marked on the facing is where we're going to start. And then I'll have one pin where, um, where the notch meets. And then other than that, I'm just easing as I go. Make sure you don't have any pinches if there's anything that you need to undo I think I should be fine yep everything looks good 
Okay, so, and again, down here at the bottom, we've got, you know, a pretty big gap. So I'm just gonna trim that second side that I just did. Just wanna go until the lining fabric is not wavy anymore. When it starts going more to a one to one ratio, it's a little straighter. Okay. All right, now just like with the jacket front, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna press this seam open all the way around. And then when I get to the bottom here, I'm going to press the facing seam 5 eighths of an inch, which is the seam allowance, which should fold back pretty easily back on itself just so we can have that fold pressed in. So I'm gonna do that real quick and then I'll come right back. Okay, so now our lining looks like this. We've got the band sewn all the way around the front and then at the bottom here you've got a gap and I've just pressed under the excess of the seam allowance on this. It'll all get taken care of when the lining is somewhat bagged. <laughs> okay, so now I'm just going to do right sides together and I'm going to sew the side seams of, um, of my jacket here. And then those are going to get pressed open and then we'll be ready for sleeves. All right, so now we've got the lining all constructed except for the sleeves and then the jacket all constructed except for the sleeves. So next we're gonna go um, and I'm gonna do both the sleeves of the lining and the jacket at the same time. We will construct them at the same time and then we will set them in. Um, yeah, and then we will uh, connect the two pieces and get everything finished up. Okay. All right, now it's time we're going to construct our sleeves for our jacket and construct the sleeves for our lining, and then we will set both in, put our shoulder pads and sleeve heads in for the top of the jacket. So that's what we're gonna do today. <laughs> All right, first things first, I'm gonna go ahead and put my ease stitches in for the top of my sleeve cap. Um, the directions tell you to go from small dot to small dot. I never, I find that they never give you enough like easing room. So I'm just gonna start before, cause this is the seam allowance to the side. Um, I'm gonna start you know, right above that, and I'm gonna do one at like um, three eighths of an inch, a long st stitch length, and then I'm gonna come all the way over to this side, and then I'm going to do like one or two stitches across, and then come back around. So there's gonna be like a, I don't have two separate lines, I mean there are two separate lines, but they're connected here. I find that makes it easier to ease in, and you don't have to worry about pulling your basting stitches out. So I have my machine set to, or I will, have it set to a size five. I have the back stitch function turned off. We're not gonna back stitch because these basting stitches will get pulled out. And I'm just gonna sew again around, do a couple stitches this way, and then go back. So all of my tails will be on the same side. I'm gonna do it to both sleeves. Okay, so both sleeves now have ease stitches in and we're just gonna leave them for now, but that'll come in handy when we go to set the sleeve in. So that has now been done. So I'm gonna follow the instructions pretty closely on these sleeves. They um, have been cut, you can tell, here for a miter. Um, so there's gonna be a non-functioning vent, but a vent nonetheless, which I find a little pointless, but we're gonna go ahead and, and follow the instructions as is. So it has us, let me check here. Um, okay, so we've done that to the upper sleeve. We need our under sleeve, which is over here. All right, so on our under sleeve, we've got this vent on both pieces, and it wants us to fold in the seam allowance on the long edge of the extension. So we're just gonna take, um, on the long edge, we're gonna fold back 5 eighths of an inch here, 
and just press that five eighths of an inch in on both sides. So I'll do that real quick. So now I have my undersleeves. I have pressed on the vent. I've pressed it back five eighths of an inch. Again, isn't wool well, lovely because it presses and holds its breath so nicely. All right, now we're going to be attaching in one seam the upper sleeve to the under sleeve, and we're going to be doing that on the non vent side. So we're going to place them, match them up correctly. That was the right one. <laughs> Okay, right sides together. So this is um, the shorter seam, actually, if you're looking at, um, you know, the seam lines, because this one's, you know, quite a bit, you know, longer. So we're doing the shorter seams, and we're going to sew them at five-eighths of an inch. Um, yes. So we're going to do that real quick, and then we're going to press the seam open. So I'm going to sew this seam on both sleeves, and then press it open. Now that we've got those seams sewn, we are going to go to the pressing board and press those open. Okay, so both sleeves should look like, well, mirrors of this. So we've got that with the um, seam pressed open. Okay, again, I'm doing this for the first time with you guys. All right, so now we're going to sew our miter. All right, so you should have two dots. You can barely see mine now, but there's two dots right here um, that are on the pattern, and we're going to match those two dots together. And there should be, I have a little notch that's right there in the middle. So we are just going to stitch, and this is just a quarter of an inch. I might be holding that up too high. We're just going to stitch at a quarter of an inch, and I think from dot to dot, right? Or just from... No, we're going to just do the whole thing. All right, so we're going to sew this whole diagonal line just from here all the way here at a quarter of an inch. like that. And we're going to press that open here in a second, but I'm going to show you again on this sleeve. So we have this part here that is an angle, and you should have two dots that are marked. You're just going to match those up, and that puts this notch right in the middle. And we're going to sew at a quarter of an inch so there's the hem right here. We're just going to sew it a quarter of an inch across this angled part here. Okay, now we're going to take this over to the pressing board. And we're going to press this seam open right here as far as we can. And actually, mine will press completely open because I have that little notch that I cut. Um, to mark where that was, um, but if you don't, it, you know, just press it as open as much as you can. So I'm going to go do that real quick. Okay, now it wants you to basically turn everything, well, right side out. So you've got your hem. We have this part here that's already been pressed over. And I'm going to finish that off actually a different way than they have us finishing it off, but we won't do that until a little later. And it actually, um, oh, sorry. Sorry about that. <laughs> this is an inch and a half seam or hem here at the bottom. So basically we're just pressing it. We're, it tells you to baste it, but I'm not going to. Um, this wool holds its shape really well. So I'm just going to go ahead and press a crease in and press the one and a half inch hem in and then um, press my vent in, and it should naturally fall, but basically 
it's going to be the 5 8 of an inch straight fold down um, that it's going to kind of fold in on itself. So I'm just going to press that. So I'm going to press the vent in and then I'm going to press this one and a half inch hem up and I'm just going to press that up on itself although I'm going to go back and sew that in a little bit but um, I'm not going to worry about basting I'm just pressing. Okay so now it will look like this. Basically it's just been pressed up and pressed to the inside. So now we're going to sew the other seam. So we're going to put it right sides together but when we get down here try and show you this. When we get down to the bottom of the sleeve here, this is kind of what it looks like. Now we have the under sleeve is pressed back and we're going to leave that, but we're going to unfold this vent just as much as we can. So we're going to sew from the top of the sleeve and this is all, you're going to match your notches, but this is all going to get eased in just the way I've been easing everything in. And actually, you should have a couple of dots, although I think mine have possibly disappeared now. There's one. I have a dot right here, but anyway. <laughs> Okay, so basically at the, um, you're going to sew 5 eighths of an inch from the top all the way down and when you hit your dot that's right here, you're going to sew across the top of this, but you're going to stop after you've, you've sewn over this folded back part, okay? So you don't need to, you don't need to go to the very end and this will overlap by 5 eighths of an inch. There should be 5 eighths of an inch um, about gap there, so that's, yeah. So we're going to sew all that seam, stop, and then sew there. And I will show you that in more detail in just a second. I'm going to sew that really quickly. Okay, so I have this seam now sewn. Now you're going to ease quite a bit of the upper sleeve into this seam. You can see how wavy it is there. That is for the elbow. Um, that's room there for the elbow, but as you can see, I have sewn from the top, 5 eighths, all the way down to the vent, and then I have pivoted, and the under sleeve is still folded back on itself, and I sewed over that and then just stopped right after I fell off the fold of that. So I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to do that to the other sleeve now as well. So there's the other one. Again, the vent is folded back on itself. That's the undersleeve. Um, and I've just sewn right off the fold there. So hopefully, hopefully, I'm keeping that all in frame too. My phone is not wanting to work very well with me. Okay. So once we've got that done, we are going to clip into the seam allowance. On the underside sleeve, under sleeve side, I'm going to clip from the corner just the under sleeve seam allowance and I'm going to clip to that, right to that corner. Not both of them, just the under sleeve. Okay? That's going to help us press it because we are going to press this seam open and then these are going to get pressed. Hold on. Yeah. to the upper sleeve side. Okay. So I'm going to press open above the clip and below the clip, the whole vent is going to get pressed uh, to the under sleeve side. So I'm going to quickly clip this one. This is also a good time to make sure 
that you've pressed up your hem correctly and if you need to make any changes you can. I'm just going to clip that seam allowance. Okay, so I'm going to press that open and also just kind of that's going to get pressed to the um, that side and then above it is going to get pressed open and then the opposite for the other sleeve. So I'm going to do that really quick and then um, yeah, we'll have a look at it. All right, I just wanted to show you a little up close what we're talking about here. Okay, so this is the vent, obviously. I have pressed open above, and then below I've pressed everything to the front of the sleeve. And here is where I stopped sewing when I sewed that seam. I went over just a little bit, that's okay. Um, so your upper sleeve vent should extend about 5 eighths of an inch past. Now, later on in the instructions, they're gonna have you slip stitch these two things closed which is a little ridiculous. We're just going to sew that. It's very easy. Because um, we're going to have to slip stitch, do some hand stitching um, to attach the lining to this sleeve. So as little hand sewing as possible is, I don't mind some, but there's just no reason to have to do this. Okay, so what I'm going to do, so this is pressed in and then up. And I've got all of my creases pressed in, but I'm going to open everything up and I'm gonna fold it back on itself right at those pre-pressed pre, um, lines, which is a little bit hard because it wants to go the other way, but you can do it. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna sew this pre-pressed line. I'm gonna sew from the top part of this hem, you know, the top part of the turned back raw edge, all the way down to the hem and then I'm just going to turn it back the same way and it should, you know, muscle memory, it should go just right back the way it was. But then that will seal that up without having to do um, any hand sewing on that part. So I'm going to do that real quick and then I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so there we have it. I have sewn, this is now sewn together because this next step, the pattern wants you to slip stitch that closed. Well, I don't know why you wouldn't just do it with the machine. So <laughs> I did clip my corner in here. Um, flip that right side out. I clipped my corner just to keep, you know, help reduce bulk. But again, that pressed memory line, it pops into place pretty easily. So you can base this together if you want, but um, I mean, I'm not going to, because eventually this is actually, these are all going to be sewn down with the buttons. Um, and the instructions also <clears throat> say that you can, you know, peel this back and you could slip stitch or catch stitch your sleeve to the jacket now. Um, but I find that makes it kind of hard to get in and sew as much of the lining to the sleeve as possible with the machine. So I'm going to leave that for now because you can always go in and do that later if you want. So now our jacket sleeves are finished. So let's do the lining sleeves and get them set in. All right, now it's time to do our sleeve linings and then we can get things set in um, set in properly. Okay, let me just look at the instructions. <laughs> I am totally sewing this for the first time with you guys. All right, so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take our upper sleeve. Again, your lining piece has a separate upper sleeve um, because of the vent. Uh, pattern piece is what I'm trying to say. But we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to sew well, actually, you can sew your E-stitches in at the top. It's not as important to do that on the lining because no one sees it. Um, so I'm actually just going to ease it in with my fingers as I go along. And if you get some pleats in your lining sleeve, it is not the end of the world because no one sees it. <laughs> so you can do it if you want to do it properly. I'm not going to bother with it. Okay, so that's the first step. If you want to do it, that's absolutely fine. I'm, I'm just not going to. Okay. Um, it wants us to reinforce this edge here because we're going to have to clip into this. Um, you should have a dot right here at the edge. Can you see that? It's right here at the corner um, of your vent on your upper sleeve. We're working on the upper sleeve right now. And um, it wants us to reinforce so that we can clip into it. So I'm just going to go, I don't know, like an inch and hit that dot and go an inch right on the seam line. And then we're going to clip into it. Once I've got my reinforced corners there, 
right there. I'm going to clip from the corner to my stitching, but not through my stitching. So I want to follow these as closely as possible, unless I think something's better. <laughs> okay. Okay, now we are going to stitch our vent side. This fabric does have a right and a wrong side. So we're going to stitch our under sleeve to our upper sleeve on the vent. So we're not doing this, this, this is not being done the same way it was done on the um, uh, other one. We're going to match our dots, match our notches. Um, because again, this is with the elbow, so you'll have to do some easing, but we're gonna stitch from the dot all the way to the top of the seam. All right, so it will look like, can you see the jog? Like this is the undersleeve here. It's gonna stick way out. There's the undersleeve. I'm actually missing a dot that should be right here on my upper sleeve, but it matches with the dot that's um, right here on the undersleeve. So I'm just going to sew from this dot that's on your pattern all the way to the top, and I'm going to ease the upper sleeve in between the notches because that's for the elbow. So the under sleeve is on the outside. I stopped right at that dot. And now it wants you to clip even with the extension or above the extension, right above the extension, clip to the seam line um, that's right there. So I'm going to do that on the under sleeve, not the upper sleeve, on the under sleeve. Okay, now I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to lay this out flat. So we still only have the one. We're gonna press open the seam allowance from the top till we get here to the, oh my gosh, the vent. I'm being slammed with robocalls today. <laughs> from the top until we get to the vent here. Pressed open. <clears throat> and then on the upper sleeve where you have the weird cutout, you're gonna press this up 5 eighths of an inch and then press this over 5 eighths of an inch and so you're going to have just a teeny tiny little corner there where you clipped. And then on the extension on the under sleeve, you're going to press that back 5 eighths of an inch. So I'm going to press that all into place and then I'll bring you over to the um, ironing board and show you what that all looks like. All right, so here is the back side of the sleeve. So this is the upper sleeve and this is the under sleeve. Okay, so what I have done, um, hopefully you can kind of tell, on the upper sleeve, remember we clipped into that corner there. I have turned this back 5 eighths of an inch, pressed it, put that up 5 eighths of an inch, 5 eighths of an inch and pressed it. Um, and it's, it'll be, you know, uh, diagonal here because you clipped into that. And then above here, I have pressed the seam open. And then my extension on my under sleeve here, so it will lay over that like so. I've just pressed it back 5 eighths of an inch. So that's what everything looks like on the lining. And then if you flip it over, it wants you to situate everything. It wants you to slip stitch the extension down I can't get that all like flanagled here with one hand, but you get what I mean. When this is all laid out, <laughs> it wants you to slip stitch the top of this extension. This should all be 
I may have this pressed up too much in the back. Anyway, um, it wants you, this will all be flat, and it wants you to slip stitch the top of this vent um, to the underlap. I'm just gonna do a quick little mach machine stitch. No one's gonna see that. It's gonna be in the sleeve. I'm not gonna take the time to slip stitch that part of it, because we're gonna be slip stitching quite a bit down here um, when we attach it, especially the vent, to the actual sleeve. So I'm just gonna stitch right across here, um, once I get everything nice and flat, stitch right across here, and um, then, after that, I'll come back and show you after that, and then we're gonna sew the other, the other two seams together, and then our lining sleeve will be done. All right, so this is what it looks like when it's all finished. This is pressed back. You're gonna have a gap here because this is gonna get all hand stitched to the vent on the actual sleeve. So again, you can slip stitch that if you'd like. I just, it's easier to do that. <laughs> so now that we've done that, and I can show it to you from the back too, um, it's the right side. So there's the back side. This is the under sleeve. It's all <clears throat> sewn. That's pressed back, it's pressed open, and then we've got this pressed open, the 5 8 um, which actually might be a little bit bigger than 5 8 but anyway, that's easy to adjust. Okay, so now we're gonna do this on both sleeves. Now we are going to sew this seam together. So I'm gonna sew that real quick and then press it open on both sleeves and then we will come right back. Okay, so we're gonna stop for today um, and we'll catch back up next week, but you should have both lining sleeves. Well, let's start. Let's start with the start. Okay, you should have your lining completely constructed with the band um, and with the side seams all done. Okay, so it should look somewhat like that. Again, remember it's open at the bottom there. That's fine. Your shell, excuse all the lights. Your shell should be completed, the band should be on, um, the shoulder seams are done, but the sides are not because we've not yet attached the ribbon because I'm still waiting on it. So again, I am going out of order on this, um, but yeah, that's what you should have for the shell of the body. And then, so we can't put sleeves in yet. <laughs> so then our sleeves should be all constructed and pressed. You could base that if you want. Um, and our lining sleeves all set and ready to go. All right, so next time we are going to insert our sleeves. Hopefully I can um, do our, actually next time we can do our pockets and all of our ribbon work. Then we will insert our sleeves and do all of our sleeve heads and um, shoulder pads. And then it's just a matter of putting the lining and the body together. Um, so yeah, doesn't look like much yet, but we're getting there. See you next week.